Hello. It's been a while, hasn't it? All right, so I'm just about to cook and I thought to myself, oh, video this because, video this, video this? It's called record, Rena. Okay, hello. All right, so I'm about to make some dinner and I'm really just throwing whatever I had in the house together. What I'm doing tonight is part of my go-to. It's like a really, sorry, some things are cooking already. Um, it's a dish I make or it's a, what do I, oh, sorry. I have like this weird, hold on. Coming. Sorry, I just have this like stuff on the counter. Um, all right, I'm just gonna make a little salmon, right? I'm gonna turn them into tacos. But the salmon I'm gonna cook, um, it's really, it's it's one, two, three. That's it, it's, it's one of the most easiest things you could make and then do so many things with it. So the salmon that I'm gonna show you, I mean really, it's it's just so simple. You could put it on a salad, you can make it into tacos, you can put it over rice, or I mean, you could just do anything with it. So, you know, some people get a little freaked out when they're cooking fish, I don't know why. Um, it's, God, if I were to poach fish, that's what I should show you one day, is how to poach fish. Talk about easy. Talk about healthy and easy. We'll do that another time. This is just going to be a light pan fry. And... Uh, Again, it's just like a little oil, a little salt and pepper, fish, you're done. And then you can turn this fish into any sort of dish you want. You can incorporate it in any different way that you want. So um, this is what, it, and well, here's the thing though. All right, so here's salmon. Usually I buy a big piece from many, well, there used to be a really good fish store uh, in um, Chicago called Isaacson Steins. It was like a wholesale fish mart. You, know, you go in, you get the plastic gloves, and you just get these plastic bags, just reach into these bins with fish. Anyway, um, they got bought out. Now the, the, the building's going to be condos. Anyway, so it goes. So now I go to Trader Joe's or Whole Foods or, you know, I, places that are a little more expensive, and they don't have that much pizzazz as Isaacson's, nonetheless. What I do is I, I cut up the salmon when I come home into portions, individually bag them, and then I put in the freezer, so when I want some fish, I just, you know, take out that one portion or two, if I need two portions, whatever, and I thaw it out and I cook it. Super easy. So I just discovered a piece of salmon in my freezer. Yes. So then I can make it tonight. So here's the thing. Skin on. Very important. That's kind of like part of the dish. Skin on. I'm going to show you for, in a second what I do there. Um, so let's just get started. Let's just do it. I just really want to show you this, um, you know, how I just cook the fish. And then you can do it on your own. And like I said, do whatever you want with it. So I'm probably going to stop this because, you know, I'm not going to keep on recording myself while the fish is cooking. It's going to take a little bit. Uh, not too long, though. So I'm just going to show you the beginning part and, um, and the end part-ish. So, you know, everyone's stove is different. Um, I'm going to start on a higher flame. And then I'm going to bring it down a little bit. So... My, my stove runs a little higher, so it's like when you put it on low, low is really medium, right? It's, just, it's not, it's off a little bit. So anyway, I'm putting it below medium, so it's like medium high right now. And that's going to heat up. And now I'm going to take uh, grapeseed oil, right? Um, because I'm going to be cooking the fish for a while, and I'm going to use, you know, high heat for a little bit. And grapeseed oil is perfect for high heat. Do not use olive oil. Don't use olive oil. There's only some times where, some uh, situations where cooking with olive oil is fine. Um, just cooking some black beans over there. Um, I'll show you later. But um, not for this kind of thing. So, grapeseed oil. And I'm just going to use, God, that wasn't even a lot. That was like not even half a tablespoon. Um... Again, we're not deep frying anything. I'm just pan frying. And because this is a really, this is like a, I just bought this pan, very non-stick, so you really don't need a lot of oil. So letting the oil heat up, and what I like to do is um, put a little salt in the pan after it heats a bit, um, just because that's what I do. There's no secret to that, it's just what I do. Okay. So that's heating up. I'm gonna let that sit for a second. I'm gonna look at my beans 
So I always like to have black beans when I'm making tacos. And again, like it depends on depending on what I have around the house, um, I'll put different things in the black beans. So I'm gonna turn off the heat for a while though because it's been cooking. So what did I do here? Can of black beans, and what I like to do is when I open the can, um, I put water in it and I drain it and I put water in it and I drain it because you know when you open up the black beans in the can and it has that gooey black bean like liquid in there, I don't like that. So I want to rinse them out as much as possible. I suggest that actually. So I rinse out my black beans, I put it in the pot and I put, um, well first I cooked a little garlic in the, in, the, in the pot and then when it got crispy I added the black beans and then two basil leaves. Um, and, um, uh, what kind of, um, tomatoes did I have around the Kumado tomatoes? So they're the sort of brownish purple, brownish, sweet tomato. I just cut them in little pieces. I put it in there and a little salt and a little, um, smoked paprika. I mean, really you could just put black beans with salt in it and call it a day. It's delicious. Um, I, but I definitely like, um, uh, basil, not basil, um, uh, bay leaves in there. And um, I like tomatoes. Oh, and I love smoked paprika. Just put it all, put it all. All right, so, all right, this is good. I'm adding my salt like I told you I would, just a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna start skimming down. You see, nice and crispy. So what I'm gonna do is, this is kind of my only trick because there's really not a lot of tricks with what I'm doing. It's, it's very straightforward. But I love fish skin. I love any skin. I love, I love fried chicken skin, fried fish skin. Skin is so flavorful. Don't be scared of the skin. So many people are. Ugh, so tasty. Um, I like to have the, 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 the fried fish skin on the side. It's so salty, so fishy. I take little nibbles at it as I'm eating, you know, the whole dish itself. So, um, lowering the flame a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna record this just, um, so I could show you how to take the fish skin off. And then I'm gonna pause, cause I'm gonna cook the fish for a while and then I'll, I'll come back on just to kind of show you what the, what I'm cooking. Cause I'm gonna make some guacamole and I have my black beans. I um, boiled some corn, so I'm gonna do that. And uh, so anyway, show you that later. So I'm letting it sit. I probably should turn on the fan, but if I turn on the fan, you probably won't hear me as much. So, um, so let's wait a second. Let's check it. Okay. Let's wait a second. While we wait, let's have a sip of wine, shall we? So good. Okay. Okay, okay. So when you cook the skin, you know, basically, how do I say? The skin is loosening up from the whole fish right now. So not only is the flat side, you know, the side down, of course, getting crispy. Oh, that looks so good. Let me just show you right now. Hold on. Ah, where is it? Can you see? It's just a little brown, perfect, perfect. Okay, so I'm really gonna lower the heat because now the pan's hot. So this is what I'm gonna do. Um, I don't know if you could see it really well. I'll try to, I basically shimmy the fork under the skin to lift it off. So let's see. Mm -mm -mm. I try not to burn myself. So it actually, the skin comes off kind of easily because I already, like I said, it kind of separated for the rest of the fish. Skin is off, bam. So now I'm cooking the other side of the fish skin. That's it. So I guess the trick is, is that you have to cook it. You don't want to burn the skin, but you want to cook it enough where um, the fish on the bottom, it cooks enough where it starts separating. Because if the fish isn't cooked enough, then it's still connected to the skin. Right, that makes sense. So, um, sometimes, though, it's not as easy as that. So you just kind of trial and error. Um, sometimes I screw it up completely, and then I screw up the skin, and I can't eat it, and I get very upset. Um, but I'm not upset now, so I did it just fine. 
which is perfect because you're watching me. Um, all right, so I think I'm going to pause it right now. So I'm just going to cook the other side, the fish skin, until it's also crispy. I'm going to take it off, and I'm going to put it on a little paper towel just so the oil, you know, um, kind of seeps off of the skin and put it to the side. And let me say, I'm not doing anything else to this fish. Like, I just put salt on it, and I'm just going to cook it until it's done. Because here's the thing. Salmon is delicious. You don't need to mask it with all these flavors. You really don't. I like the taste of salmon. If it was tofu, I would slam all this flavor on it. Because tofu is, well, like fresh homemade tofu. That's delicious. It's so delicate. You don't want any other flavors masking that kind of subtlety. But you know what I mean. If you just get like tofu from the grocery store, slap it with flavor. But with this salmon, I really don't want to. So I've just, like I said, I put oil in the pan put a little salt. I'm just cooking the fish all the way through and that's all I'm going to do. I mean, that's really what I want to show you. Um, wait, let me check my skin. Nope, still going to cook it. And like, some, like I'm doing tacos, which I'll show you, but sometimes I just make like, you know, a bed of arugula and spinach and I put the salmon on top and I put feta cheese and sometimes toasted walnuts and and um, onions and all this stuff. Just like whatever you like on top. Um, I mean, it's really versatile, right? So, very simple. All right, I'm going to pause. I'm going to pause. And then we'll we'll talk again soon when this is done cooking. Bye for now. All right. I am all done. And I've plated everything. And now I'm going to show you. But what I want to say before I show you is that um, there's a little trick. Um, I, I was talking about how easy it is just to, you know, cook the fish, but of course it's very easy to overcook a fish, right? So that's, that's, uh, that's a little tricky. I mean, personally, if, if I know where I'm getting the fish, um, and, and I know this is fine to do with the type of fish it is, I'll have it, um, kind of raw, you know, like I, I don't, you know, I'll, I don't need it, um, well cooked through. There is this moment um, when you're cooking fish where it, it just goes from raw to what, I don't know what, medium rare or something. Um, and it is so juicy and so still, it's so oily still. It's like this perfect moment if you could catch the fish, you know, uh, and take it off um, the heat right when it turns from, like I said, raw to just fully cooked, just at the, the beginning stages of fully cooked, it's outstanding. What I did is I, I ended up cooking it a little longer. I got a little distracted. I didn't overcook it by any means, um, but it's not that, that, that perfect succulent, you know, moment I just described. However, it's very good. So that's something to take note. And that's just trial and error of just like figuring out you know, how long you have to cook it, checking it every once in a while, touching it with your finger, right? Food is a really tactile thing when you're cooking to know if it's if it's done or not. So I guess that's something to pay attention to. So, um, but if you overcook it, you don't have to eat it. I mean, you don't want to waste the food either, but you know, it's not the end of the world. Um, okay, let me just show you what I made. Ready? Um, so, oop, there's everything. So what I have here is the black beans, and I end up putting corn in there as well. So on top of everything else I described, there's corn. Um, these are my tacos. Uh, I have quinoa on it because I like quinoa with my salmon. And um, I don't normally put sour cream on my, ta my tacos like this, but oh, I love sour cream, and I ended up buying it for some reason, and the brand I bought was Daisy's which really is such a delicious, delicious brand. So there's sour cream on it, but just so you know, it's not a must. And you'll see, woo, look at this. That's the fish skin. Oh, this is gonna be so good. And then um, guacamole. And there's some secrets that I have, you know, some hidden gems that I put into my guacamole to make it so fabulous, but I'm not gonna talk about that right now. So what I'm going to do is put the guacamole on the, on the taco and uh, I'm going to eat all that and every once in a while I'm going to nibble on my fish skin and then also every once in a while I'm going to have a bite of my corn and beans and it's going to be so good and I can't wait and that's what I wanted to share with you. So 
Hopefully you want to make salmon. Hopefully you want to try fried fishkin. Please do and let me know all about it. And I'm going to feed myself right now. Okay, bye.